everybody. Welcome to Van Gogh to Plato. My name is Annika and today we're going to be talking about inventors and inventing. And we're going to look at a painting by J.T. Harwood called The Young Constructors. But before we look at the painting, I'm going to read this story, which is The Most Magnificent Thing by Ashley Spires. This is a regular girl and her best friend in the whole wide world. They do all kinds of things together. They race, they eat, they explore, they relax. She makes things, he unmakes things. One day, the little girl has a wonderful idea. She's going to make the most magnificent thing. She knows just how it will look. She knows just how it will work. All she has to do is make it, and she makes things all the time. Easy peasy. First, she hires an assistant. Next, they gather their supplies. They set up somewhere out of the way and get to work. The girl tinkers and hammers and measures, while her assistant pounces and growls and chews. When she is finished, she steps, she steps back to admire her work. She walks around one side, her assistant examines the other. It doesn't look right. Her assistant picks it up and gives it a shake. It doesn't feel right either. They are shocked to discover that the thing isn't magnificent or good. It isn't even kind of sort of okay. It is all wrong. The girl tosses it aside and gives it another go. She smooths and wrenches and fiddles. Her assistant circles and tugs and wags. When she is finished, she stands up and takes a long look at it. Her assistant gives it a nudge with his paw. The thing is still wrong. She decides to try again. The girl saws and glues and adjusts. She stands and examines and stares. She twists and tweaks and fastens. She fixes and straightens and studies. She tries all different ways to make it better. She makes it square, she makes it round, she gives it legs, she adds antenna. She makes it fuzzy, she makes it long, short, rough, smooth, big, small. One even smells of stinky cheese but none of them are magnificent. Her hard work attracts a few admirers, but they don't understand. They can't see the magnificent thing she has in her mind. She gets mad. The angrier she gets, the faster she works. She smashes pieces into shapes. She jams parts together. She pummels the little bits in. Her hands feel too big to work and her brain is too full of all the not right things. If only the thing would just work. Crunch. The pain starts in her finger. It rushes up to her brain and she explodes. It is not her finest moment. I'm no good at this. I quit. Her assistant suggests a walk. It's not much help at first, but before long, she starts to feel different. Bit by bit, the mad gets pushed out of her head. As they start along, she comes across the first word thing, the first wrong thing she made. The bad feelings are about to start all over again. Then she notices something surprising. There are some parts of the wrong things that are really quite right. The bolts on one, the shape of another, the wheel to seat ratio of the next, there are all sorts of parts that she likes. By the time she reaches the end of the trail, she finally knows how to make the thing magnificent. She gets to work. She works carefully and slowly, tinkering, hammering, twisting, fiddling, gluing, painting. Her assistant makes sure there are no distractions. This is the perfect thing to ward off bears. This will stop that leak. This one's all wet. The afternoon fades into evening. Finally, she finishes. 
she alerts her assistant. The pair take a good long look. It leans a little bit to the left and it's a bit heavier than expected. The color could use a bit of work too, but it's just what she wanted. They climb aboard and take it for a spin. They are not disappointed. It is really the most magnificent thing. Wasn't that a fun story? That little girl was an inventor. Do you guys know what an inventor is? An inventor is someone who creates something new or figures out a new way to do things. Inventors are very creative and they help people solve their problems. Sometimes inventing can be a little hard. Like the girl in the story, sometimes you have to try a lot of times before our inventions work. Behind me is a painting by an artist named J.T. Harwood. It's called The Young Constructors. J.T. Harwood was inspired by his son, who was named Willard. Willard loved inventing. And so J.T. Harwood created this painting of these two little boys practicing making their own inventions. Here, these boys are making a crane. Do you guys know what a crane is? A crane is a machine that helps lift things up and down. Sometimes those things are so heavy that a person can't lift them up on their own. So a crane can help us lift up very heavy things. Can you see what the crane is lifting up in this painting? It's lifting up these wooden blocks. The crane is using this thing right here called a steam engine to give it power and energy to move the blocks up and down. A steam engine is a very important invention because it helped give machines lots of energy and power, like a crane. But they also powered other machines, like a train. Did you know that the steam engine was first thought of by a man named Hero of Alexandria and he lived in the ancient Roman Empire a really long time ago, but he couldn't figure out how to make his idea work. Just like the little girl in the book, he tried a lot of times, but it just didn't work. But then, almost 2,000 years later, a man named Thomas Savory was able to make Hero's invention work. And so now we have the steam engine, which can help power machines like cranes or trains. There's a lot of important lessons we can learn from Thomas, Savory, and Hero of Alexandria. The first is that sometimes we need help. We can work together with our friends or our family or our guardians or our teachers to help make our inventions work. Sometimes we need other people's help to make our inventions work. The second thing is it's okay if our inventions don't work at first. Sometimes it takes a lot of tries, like the little girl in the book or Hero of Alexandria. Sometimes our inventions aren't always going to work. But inventing can be really fun and we just need to keep trying. Finally, inventing is very exciting and fun and can help people solve their problems. Inventors are really cool people and you can be an inventor too. Now I'm going to tell you about some of my favorite inventors. Did you know that chocolate chip cookies had to be invented? And did you know that they were invented on accident? One day, a woman named Ruth Wakefield was making cookies when she ran out of a special baker's chocolate that she needed to mix into the dough. So instead, she got a chocolate bar and she cut it up into really small pieces and mixed it in with the dough. And she thought that when she put the cookies in the oven, the chocolate would melt and mix in with the dough. But instead, they stayed in their form like this and created yummy chocolate chip cookies. Because Ruth Wakefield accidentally created chocolate chips, now we have them for our pancakes and cookies or just to eat plain. Did you know we can get ideas for inventions from anywhere? George de Mistral, who created Velcro, which is this sticky stuff that helps keep our shoes on our feet, got the idea for Velcro when he was walking up in the mountains in Switzerland with his dog, when he noticed that there were a lot of burrs or little plants getting stuck in his dog's ear. That probably wasn't very fun for his dog. Finally, when he got home, he was picking the burrs out of his dog's fur, and he wondered, why are these things so sticky? So he got one and he looked at it really close under a microscope and he saw that the burrs had little hooks on them that helped them get really sticky on fur and fabric. So he got the idea to create Velcro. Just like Hero of Alexandria and the little girl in the book, it took George a long time to be able to create Velcro. But now we have Velcro to keep our shoes on our feet and even astronauts in space use it. Did you know that anybody can be an inventor? Even kids. Do you know the inventor of one of my favorite foods, popsicles, was just a kid. When Frank Epperson was 11 years old, he got a glass of water, and he put soda flavoring in it, and, a wood and got a wooden stick, and stirred it up, 
And before he could drink it, he forgot about it. He set it down and he ran and played. And then he went to bed. The next morning he came outside and it had been a very cold night and he got his soda, but it was frozen. So he pulled it out from the wooden stick and he had a popsicle and he licked it and he thought it was really yummy. And then he got the idea to make popsicles. At first he called them Epsicles because his name was Frank Epperson. But then when he grew up and he had kids, they started calling him Pop. So when he gave them an Epsicle, they called it a Popsicle and he liked that name better. I really like popsicles because they're so yummy and when you're finished eating them, you can use popsicle sticks to make your very own inventions. So now we're gonna use popsicles to make our very own steam engine like Thomas Savory and Hero of Alexandria.